Unlike addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division of functions, the composition of functions is not a familiar process from arithmetic. To help you grasp the idea, let's look at an example. So what I have here are three bubbles. And this is a diagram trying to get us to understand the connection between Fahrenheit, Celsius, and Kelvin. If you've taken a chemistry class or a physics class, you may realize that Fahrenheit, Celsius, and Kelvin all measure temperature. For most of us, when we think of temperatures, we measure things in Fahrenheit. But of course, most of you know from looking at a weather forecast that that also corresponds to a Celsius temperature. If you're a science fan, you'll know that also corresponds to a Kelvin temperature. If we have a Fahrenheit temperature, we can find its equivalent in Celsius and the equivalent temperature in Kelvin. So for instance, what about the freezing point of water, 32? In Celsius, that's 0 degrees Celsius. And in Kelvin, that's 273 degrees Kelvin. You may understand one or more of these connections, but what you may not realize is there are actually some functions that take you from Fahrenheit to Celsius to Kelvin. I've gone ahead and written out those formulas here. Celsius is equal to 5 ninths times Fahrenheit minus 32. And Kelvin is simply Celsius plus 273. If you go ahead and substitute in 32 for F here, you'll see that you get C equals 0. If you put 0 in place of C, you'll see you get K equals 273. So everything seems to work out well. What we want to focus on here is the steps that are involved in these two functions. Our first function here, C equals 5 ninths times the quantity F minus 32, corresponds to subtracting 32 and then multiplying by 5 ninths. The second function corresponds to the adding 273. So if I color code these, you can see in red the first two steps correspond to my red formula here. And the last step corresponds to this blue one. What we would like to be able to do is to write out a single formula that takes in Fahrenheit and takes us directly over to Kelvin. And to do that, I'm going to need to put these three steps together in a single formula. So if you think about it a little bit, you might come up with the formula that I have here. K equals 5 ninths times the quantity F minus 32 plus 273. If you were to plug a number in, like 32 for F, you'd first subtract 32, then multiply by 5 ninths, and then add 273. So this new formula combines each of the formulas that we already have into a single one, and in fact you can see them. Here's the part that does the Fahrenheit to Celsius, and then plus 273, that's the part that does the Celsius to Kelvin. Essentially what we've just done is a composition of these two formulas or these two functions that we have up here above. Let's look at it a little bit closely without the help of that diagram. We see the 5 ninths times the quantity F minus 32. We can think of that as a function C of F. That means that I've named it capital C because this output Celsius. In parentheses, I've put little f because it takes an input of Fahrenheit. And the formula for that is 5 ninths times a quantity f minus 32. That is where I've put this big orange box in the other formula, the k equals c plus 273. Let me think of what remains is the box plus 273, but remember the box represents the Celsius, so I'm going to write K of C equals C plus 273. That's essentially the other part of the formula. That's the adding 273 part. So what you'll see is we can think of C of F 
remember that put output Celsius as going in place of the little c, which is the variable that represents Celsius. So essentially what we're doing is into my Kelvin function, I'm placing the Celsius function. So I can write that out by writing capital K with a big bracket. That's just like a parenthesis, but I've used brackets here to try and make sure you can see the difference between the two functions. And inside there, I'm inputting the Celsius function. In some textbooks, you'll see that written as the composition of K and C, and it'll be read K of C of F. Other textbooks will write composition with a little circle here, and that means composition also. That means you're going to put the C function into the K function. If the names change, well then you'll just always put this one in back here into the one in front. Our original function, we could have written it as K composed with C, or K of C of F. And so here's that composition written out completely. And you can see if we take the Celsius function here and put it in place of that variable, we get the function that we have up here. And in general, that's how we usually do a composition. Let's move away from having a specific example here, and let's try and do some compositions, but this time just involving functions in general. I'm going to let f of x equal x squared plus 1, and g of x equal 1 over x. What we're going to do is compose f with g and g with f. The difference here is the order in which these functions are operating. If I'm doing f composed with g, that means I need to take the g function and put it into f. Since g of x is equal to 1 over x, into the f function, I'm going to put the formula for g of x. Because we see up here, g of x was equal to 1 over x. What this new notation means is we're going to put into the f of x formula 1 over x. So in place of x here, we need to place 1 over x. When I do that, we'll get the quantity 1 over x squared plus 1. What you'll notice is the g function is the reciprocal part here. And then after that, we'd square and add 1. So these two functions together actually have three steps and this new formula combines all of those together in the proper order. Now on the other hand, if we do g composed with f, that means now we need to do the f steps first, so we'll be squaring and adding 1, and then do the reciprocal. So the way we write that out is g, and inside of g, we're going to put f of x. So let's go ahead and put in place of f of x there, x squared plus 1. So that now means that I need to take the f of x and put that in place of x and g. When I do that, I get 1 over x squared plus 1. If we were to plug a number in there, we'd square and add 1 first. That's the f part. But then we do the reciprocal. That's the g part. So you'll see it's the same steps as are in these two functions but we either do the g first or the f first depending on whether the g is inside or the f is inside. Most of the time in this class we'll have a function that can be written as a composition and we want to break it apart into those two functions. The easiest way to do this is to take the formula and to break it down into the steps that it performs. If I were to go ahead and plug a number in place of x here, the first thing I would do is square the input, then I'd add 7, and then I'd take the square root. If I'm going to go ahead and write this out as a composition, I need to tell you what the g and the f are that correspond to these steps. And there's usually more than one way to do this. I could make the first step 
And since g is in back here, it's the one that corresponds to the first thing that you do, b the squaring. If that's the case, then the other function has to do the adding 7 and square root. So that means that f of x is equal to the square root of x plus 7. Because if you plug a number in there, you'd add 7, then take the square root. This would be a perfectly reasonable way to write out h with f and g. But I could also make g be the first two steps of this function. So I could make it the squaring and add 7. If that's the case, then f of x has got to be the square root part. For us, it really doesn't matter which way we do it, but when we apply the chain rule, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want the f function, the one that you do last, to be as simple as possible. And square root of x is a fairly simple thing compared to square root of x plus 7. So we'd probably write it this way. But again, for the purposes of this problem, either one is a reasonable answer. A composition occurs when you have two functions, f and g, and the composite function or the composition of g and f is a function whose values are given by g of f of x. In other words, you put f of x into g. And this makes sense for all x in the domain of f such that f of x is in the domain of g. In other words, if we plug a number into x and get an output from f, it has to make sense to be able to put that into g. So let's go ahead and do a few more examples here. Let f of x equal x squared plus 2x and g of x equals x plus 7. What I want to do here is find f of g of 6. What this means is I need to put 6 into g, figure out what I get, and then put that into f. So let's start by putting 6 into g. So g of 6 is 6 plus 7, which is 13. And now I'm going to take that and put it into f. f of 13 is going to be 13 squared plus 2 times 13. 2 times 13 is 26. 13 squared is 169. So when I add those, I get 195. If I say g of f of 1, now we have to put the 1 into f first, figure out what the output is, and then put that into the g function. So the other way around. f of 1 is 1 squared plus 2 times 1, or 3. And now let's put 3 into g. So I'm going to put in place of f of 1, the number 3. And g of 3 is simply 3 plus 7, or 10. What makes this problem a little bit different is in this case, I've actually specified some inputs. In the previous ones, I'd just given you an x here, and you figured out what the formula was for the composition. Now you're really working with inputs and outputs. But if I did ask you to find g of f of x, well, what I'd have to do is in place of f of x, is go ahead and put what it's equal to. And then this means put that entire group of symbols into g. So g was input plus 7, or x plus 7. And in those parentheses, I'm going to go ahead and put x squared plus 2x. So my final answer here is x squared plus 2x plus 7 because these parentheses really aren't doing anything other than to make us understand that what had been there was x and we're putting this group of symbols in place of x. If I switch it around and ask for f of g of x, well that means in place of g I'm going to go ahead and put x plus 7. Here's the f function, which was input squared plus 2 times the input, or x squared plus 2 times x. And into those places I want to put the input, I need to put x plus 7. So I get x plus 7, that quantity squared, plus 2 times the quantity x plus 7.
I could go ahead and foil things out here and distribute this too and simplify this, but this part that we have right here is the composition. Any farther that I go is just simplifying this expression.